Hi y'all, welcome back to my channel. I got a fun and easy project today. It's a screwdriver kit with multiple tips. It's a four-way. Uh, depending on what kind of kit you, you get, it, it can be uh, a flat tip and, and an Allen wrench. Uh, I've had this one for 10 years and really love it. And the reason I like th this one is it, uh, is it has a Robertson screw, uh, number two and a number one. Uh, and when I got into woodworking, I really like the square end screws, so this, this kit's been very handy for that. Um, however, I want to show you a really inexpensive approach to make a, 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 a kit from a Harbor Freight uh, $2 screwdriver. And, you know, these make great gifts, for, not, not for just wood turners, but for anybody with a toolbox. So let's get started. So like I said, you can get these kits from lots of different places. Uh, craft supply, uh, chefware kits. Uh, here's a, a kit from Rockler that comes with a, a nice brass uh, ferrule. Uh, but this is the kit we're planning on using today, and it's just basically a $2 4 one screwdriver from Harbor Freight. Uh, if you live outside the U.S., you may find something, uh, something similar, and occasionally these are, these are frequently discounted, or you can buy with your 20% coupon or, or what have you. Uh, here's one I made years ago from some laminated uh, cherry and, and maple with a, a copper ferrule. Uh, out of that Harbor Freight, uh, uh, Harbor Freight uh, uh, screwdriver. Today we're going to use some um, dried persimmon, which I think will be very, very nice. We're going to cut it out of this stick, but any type of hardwood, uh, dried hardwood, should work uh, work fine. You're going to be sure you want to cut the ends off square. This particular uh, screwdriver we're going to use calls for a six-inch piece of wood, one and a half inch square. So we're going to go ahead and cut that up. Okay, let me take take a moment for just a, a, a couple of quick uh, safety tips because I believe in safety. I inventory my fingers when I go in the shop and I inventory them when I leave. Uh, and that's no joke. Always wear safety glasses. Uh, don't you know your ears are a concern, uh, especially when you got the uh, an overhead uh, air filtration unit. You got a dust collector going. You got your table saw going. You know wear some ear protections to lower those decibels. One of the main things though is. Use the guards that come with your equipment. Uh, I, this is a, a rigid uh, table saw. I'm not uh, promoting rigid, but I've had this for probably 15 years, and it's been a good saw, and I really like it. One of the things I like about it is the, so, the uh, guard is easily removed and easily placed back, and I get kind of twitchy when the guard's not on there. You have to take it off for certain types of cuts, but, but I put it back uh, when that cut is, cut is uh, finished. Uh, I, I was helping a friend of mine uh, do some... Uh, Showing him how to do some bottle stoppers at his his, his shop, and he he was not cutting a, a, with a guard. He was uh, not using a push stick. He was cutting small pieces of wood, uh, guiding everything with his fingers. And I said, David, you're making me real nervous with this. You not using a push stick or or a guard when when you really should because it's not that much of a bother to do so. And he said, you know, Mike, I've been I've been a, a woodworker over for 25 years, and I feel real comfortable doing this. You can imagine he was looking at his toes the next time he saw me uh, about six weeks later after he nipped his fingers in the table saw. You know, it doesn't make a difference how long you've been doing it if you've been doing it in an unsafe way. Sooner or later it's going to get you. If you're careless, you work at night, uh, you're sloppy, consider getting a saw stop and saving those fingers if you're not going to use the safety equipment that came with your saw. This is a brand new SD card. came with my uh, new... Uh... Canon Sure Shot camera and it uh, failed after only a few uses, so I had to reshoot some scenes. Oh well. First thing you're going to do with your handle blank is mark centers, put it between centers, turn it around. You're going to put a tendon to fit your particular small chuck jaws. We've still got a little bit more rounding to do. Bring the jaws up closer. Or rather, the tool rest up closer.
Before I tighten it down, I'm going to go ahead and bring this up and actually make sure I get it centered. Lock it down. Now I'll tighten this up. Now before I drill a hole, I like to go ahead and, and put the uh, ferrule on. Now, you don't need a ferrule on these screwdrivers if you leave, leave enough wood on the end, but I kind of like the looks of a ferrule, so I'll simply uh, put the ferrule on the end, mark the edge, and then go ahead and take it down. And then I'll do a series of trial fits until I get it get it fitted on there. The key to, to this thing is measuring the right size hole for the uh, fitting you're going to use. Um, and if it's for this uh, set I got from Rockler, it, it's round. It, it turns out you need a, a three eighths, an exact three eighths inch hole. And let me put a reminder in there uh, early on. They only go in one direction because you've got to have this fitting that the uh, uh, tip holder uh, holds in there. So be real careful that you don't get them backwards. This one you can get backwards because they have the same diameter on both sides. Now this Harbor Freight set, not so much so because it's got this ridge so it's pretty obvious that you're going to uh, put this in into the hole. Uh, but you're going to measure from corner to corner on these things and make sure you get the right side drill bit. In, in this particular case, the 9 sixteenths, uh, I think is going to be just about right. You also got to make sure you, you measure your uh, bit holder so you know how deep to get. In my case, it's just a bit over three and a quarter inches, so I put this flag on, on the drill bit. You're going to drill fairly slow. I would say no more than, uh, you know, no more than, than 500. Start making noises, clear the chips, because that means uh, you begin to jam up. Now I'm going to finish turning the shape of this. Uh, by the way, if you want to drill on the drill press lathe, uh, here's a clip that shows you a really easy way to hold your blank. I prefer to drill on the lathe because I think it's easier for me to uh, get it centered. You can drill these uh, screwdriver blanks and other tool blanks on the lathe. If so, this hand clamp uh, works real well if you make a 90 degree cut in in the opposing uh, opposing jaws to to hold it. It's about a half inch uh, on each uh, each corner. Now that I've got the ferro glued, I like to use epoxy. Uh, it doesn't matter what kind. Uh, I'm using five minutes because it it dries pretty pretty quick. We're going to drill a hole. I don't like to use a Forstner bit on end grain for these smaller holes. Uh, I found a set on Amazon. For about 30 bucks of these high-speed steel. I don't know how good a quality they are, but they look pretty good. They feel good. They, I've had them a couple of years. They seem to work well. The best thing I like about them, they've got a bunch of larger sizes from 9 sixteenths, which is what I'm drilling with, all the way up to one inch. Uh, so if you need a set like that, you can find them on my Amazon shop. But anyhow, we're going to drill very slowly. The key to, to this thing is measuring the right size hole for the uh, fitting you're going to use. Um, and if it's for this uh, set I got from Rockler, it, it's round. It, it turns out you need a, a three eighths, an exact three eighths inch hole. And let me put a reminder in there uh, early on. They only go in one direction because you've got to have this fitting that the uh, uh, tip holder uh, holds in there. So be real careful that you don't get them backwards. This one you can get backwards because they have the same diameter on both sides. Now this Harbor Freight set, not so much so because it's got this ridge, so it's pretty obvious that you're going to uh, put this in into the hole. Uh, but you're going to measure.
from corner to corner on these things and make sure you get the right side drill bit. In, in this particular case, the 9 sixteenths uh, I think is going to be just about right. Uh, we're going we're gonna to glue this holder in later. So we're going to use a 90 degree cone to help keep this run true. And then I'm going to look at the shape of my other screwdriver. And it's going to be a little bit smaller right there. And how you shape it is certainly uh, uh, up to you. I just wouldn't get, I would make the handle fairly thick so you can get a lot of leverage, a lot of torque when you're using it. And I wouldn't get too, too crazy about too many convoluted beads and coves. Uh, just make you a good comfortable, good comfortable handle. So I'm going to use a spindle gouge, uh, taking it from here, blending it down with a fairly straight line to the bottom of the, uh, the ferrule. faster. I'm using a half an inch spindle gauze. You can use a 3 8 inch. This one is handy. Now, keep in mind, high speed steel will cut brass, so if I hit it, it's not going to be a problem. I'll have to just go back and sharpen this uh, for too long, but, but uh, it's not going to be a real critical issue. that close enough I think sanding will take care of that. Now I'm going to put a, a similar to this one I'm going to put a few beads back here but I'll do that after I turn this shoulder. I'm going to add about three burn rings here. I'm going to use a point tool to mark the, the spacing for those. Our guitar wire, get the speed up a little bit, drop the handle over it. Don't get crazy with sanding it. I wouldn't go up to uh, maybe 180, maybe 240. Slow the speed down. I could have uh, exchanged these jaws out for something smaller and got a better fit, but I just wrapped a little tape around the ferrule I'm putting on, on the very inside hole of these jaws. Bring up the tailstock, and I think this will do just, just fine for what I'm doing. Get a smaller tool rest. Get easier to get in there. So I'm just going to finish turning it around and rounding this over. Light cut, since I don't have it held it. Well, as I might. I'm just going to round this over. Got just a little bit of tailstock to live center damage, so I've got to count for that. I don't want to dig it in the end here. That's shaping up nicely. Don't have any. We've got a little bit of a flat spot there, so let me finish taking it off. Before I go too far, I'm going to go ahead and finish sanding it. The tiny little nub on the end I'll cut off with a knife and uh, uh, sand by, by hand or uh, 
with power power sand it maybe. One thing that remains is to put a little glue on that uh, that center center piece, the tool bed holder. The critical thing about that is don't get any into this hole that the ball bearing will fit into uh, on on either side and don't slobber it in here because it may get stuck down inside and interfere with your your tool bit tool bit holder so uh, apply it down here some of it will slide up and then if it does get in there be sure to clean it up so let's mix this up now you want to make sure it's a snug fit as this one was then we're just going to tap it in place actually I'm going to turn it upside down and tap it and that's in there nice and square now to make sure we got a good fit let's get the uh, holder I'm going to examine it carefully for any any glue in those uh, in that ball bearing slot and that looks good that looks good on either side and we've got a perfect screwdriver all we got to do is add a little finish to it now I commonly remove these with a hacksaw alright so like I say the other approach I've commonly used I just thought I'd try something different propane torch would probably do it might leave some nasty fumes so let's go ahead and just use a hacksaw it won't, it won't take long Okay, and there we go. I've never had an SD card before. Uh, I don't know what's going on since it's brand new. If any of y'all uh, had some bad experience with an SD card, uh, leave it in the comments below. Okay, here's a completed screwdriver. I like it a lot. Uh, if any of y'all are into social media, uh, I'd welcome you uh, sharing this video. If you want more uh, uh, tool making uh, videos, you might click on this link to this playlist. Y'all stay safe and come on back here.